Welcome back. This time we're going to look at comparing the proportion cited for large groups of outputs. This is a different type of indicator formula and it's applicable to alternative indicators where most of the outputs have a scores of zero. So instead of looking at the average score, we're going to look at the proportion that have a non-zero score. And this particularly applies to syllabus mentions, PowerPoint citations, Wikipedia citations, pattern citations and grade literature citations where most of the scores are zero. And any other alt metric, which is most of them except for Twitter and Mendeley, that where most of the documents have a score of zero. This is an alternative to the MNLCS. The MNLCS can still be used, but this is an alternative that focuses on the proportion cited. The problem is, given a large group of outputs, how does their average, how does their impact on average compare to the world average or another comparable group? The same problem as for the MNLCS. For example, does Department A have more Wikipedia citations per article than Department B? Or does Funder C, Funder Research, that is more cited in the grey literature than the world average? Exactly the same problem as the previous presentation. The MNLCS scores don't work very well if most values are zero. That's the problem that leads to a separate formula. The MNLCS scores are inaccurate if most scores are zero, as they are for many indicators of specific types of impact. This is because the maths behind the indicator MNLCS is designed for a range of different values, whereas for these alt metrics, most values will be just zero or one. So the maths isn't the optimal maths for a set of numbers that are mostly zeros with a few ones included. So we're going to look instead at the proportion with a non-zero score, the proportion cited. This is the proportion of outputs that have a non-zero score on any indicator. For example, if groups, group A's outputs have 0, 0, 001, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0 Wikipedia citations, then that would mean two out of the 10 are cited and we would focus on the proportion cited being 20%. Instead of working out the average of the, the zeros and ones or the log transformed average of the zeros and ones, we would focus on the fact that 20% were cited. So if you'd like to just practice this, this is up to you, pause the presentation and have a look at the, this exercise. So the answers to this exercise are Group A has 40% cited, Group B has 20% cited, so Group A has the higher proportion of articles cited, and Group A has a higher proportion cited than the world average. The world average is uh, 30%, and Group A 40% is higher than the world average. So we can see, given a data set, we can compare the proportion cited to the world average or to another group, provided they're the same field and year in both cases. We meet again, however, the field and year differences issue. The proportion of articles cited with any indicator may vary between fields and over time. Our proportions of older articles are likely to be cited, whatever indicator you're choosing, and much higher proportions of articles in some fields are cited than in others. So again, we need to make sure we're not being unfair to some fields or years. It's unfair con to compare the proportions cited between groups if they publish in different fields and years or in different combinations of fields and years or in different amounts in different fields and years. As an example of this, we have group A, group B, and the world, and they publish in infectious diseases and medical ethics. And both group A and group B are world average for infectious diseases, 80% cited, and world average for ethics, 20% cited. But overall, group B has 40% cited, and group A has 60% cited. So group B has a higher score in the terms of proportion cited, 60% than group, group A, even though they're both world average. 
in both fields. And how is this possible? It's because Group A publishes a higher share of its article in the high citation specialist in infectious diseases than Group uh, B. So Group A has an unfair advantage for its higher publishing rate in the higher citation specialist in infectious diseases. We deal with this problem by field and year sample size equalization. It's a different technique to the technique used for MNLCS. We're going to artificially equalize the sample sizes. Each field year combination will be treated as having the same sample size. And if we do this, then comparisons between groups and with the world will be unbiased. Here's an example. We're recording uh, group A and group B and the world again. And we record for each group the number of articles cited and um, the number of articles. So we can calculate the proportion cited. So up to columns one, two, three, four, five, they're all the same. The first five columns are the same as before. We're calculating the proportion cited. But now we have a new fifth column, artificial sample size, in which each group is given the same artificial sample size for all of its fields. So we take the average of the number of articles in each field. And we pretend that group A publishes 150 articles in diseases and 150 in ethics. And group B publishes 150 articles in diseases and 150 in ethics. So they have the same sample sizes. Each group has the same sample sizes in all fields. And then we calculate the artificial number cited, which is the cited percentage times the artificial sample size. So for group A in diseases, the cited rate is 80%. So the artificial cited is 80% of 150, the artificial sample size. So we end up with 120 cited articles. And we do the same calculation for group B and for ethics. We multiply the percentage cited from the real data with the artificial sample size to get the artificial cited size. And then we total the artificial cited and use it to work out the field equalized proportion cited. And if we look at the bottom, if we do this, we get 50% for both. So we have a fair calculation where they both end up with the same score for this field equalized proportion cited. If you'd like to practice that, then look at these numbers and see if you can calculate the field equalized proportion cited or percentage cited for group A and group B, please. Pause now and I'll and restart when you have your answer. Here are the answers. You should get 45% for group A and 50% for group B. So first we calculate the artificial sample size and it's different for each group. It was the same on the previous example, but it, it can be different. But for each group, the sample size should be the same in all fields. So group A has 200 diseases, 400 ethics. So the average sample size is 300. So that's its artificial sample size. Confidence intervals we can calculate for these proportions. And we can use the confidence intervals to assess where the differences between groups are statistically significant. And there's a formula called Wilson score interval that can be used to calculate the confidence intervals. Big, horrible formula, but it's built into web metric analysts, so you don't need to calculate it yourself. So we've looked at the sample size equalized proportion cited, and we're going to use a variant of that, the equalized mean based normalized proportion cited, NPC or EMNPC. This is the field year equalized proportion for a group divided by the field year equalized proportion for the world set. And that gives the EMNPC. So this makes the 
calculation equivalent to the MNLCS in a sense that it gives, it normalizes it by the world. So a score above one means better than the world average, below one means lower than the world average, as before. For example, if Group A has 60% cited articles, field year equalized, and the world average for the fields and years that Group A publish in is 40%, so it's not the overall world average for all fields, but for the same fields and years, and the world average must be field equalized as well, if that's 40%, then the EMNPC would be 0.60 over 0.40, 60% over 40%, which is 1.5. Uh, one important caveat applies to the EMNPC, which is that if you have very small sample sizes, very low numbers of articles in specific field year combinations, then this causes accuracy problems because you have to inflate the numbers in the small fields to make them the same size as for the big fields when you're generating the artificial sample sizes. So the estimates are less precise, less accurate. So the solution to this is to remove small field year combinations to get optimal accuracy. For example, suppose that this is our data. We can see that group A has very few articles from 2014 for infectious diseases. It only has 20, one of which is cited. And this causes a loss of precision problem because after we do the field um, year sample size equalization, these 20 articles become 205 articles and the one cited article becomes 10.25 cited articles. So each one article in for 2014 for group A in infectious diseases counts as over 10 articles. So they have too much influence the solution would therefore be to delete delete the data for Group A infectious diseases 2014. Just delete it altogether and do the calculations without it. And then this ensures that we get uh, no, uh, we do not get this high loss of accuracy for this one point. So if we delete the article, we delete the low scores, the, the low sample sizes, then the worst case, each one article has uh, the uh, influence of 1.3 articles. This is the biggest blow up in article influence in this example, because the sample sizes are all relatively simple. So we only have a small loss of accuracy. Is a, a full calculation for EMNPC. This includes all the calculations needed for the world and the group. So we calculate the percentage cited for the world and the group for each field, field and year combination, just fields here. Then we calculate the artificial sample sizes separately for each group. They both turn out to be 150. We calculate the artificial numbers cited for each group, including the world. And we calculate the percentage cited or the proportion cited for the world and each group. And then we can divide the group, group percentages bottom right by the world percentage. And we can see that one, exactly the world average. So both group and A have exactly the world average proportion cited in all fields and years. So they have an EMNPC score of one. If you'd like to practice that, then uh, please pause the presentation now and restart it when you've got your answers. Here are my answers. I get 50% for the world and 45% and 50% for uh, Group A and Group B. These are more realistic numbers where the world sample size is much higher than Group A and Group B sample sizes. Uh, we can see that Group A has fewer articles cited than the world average for its field in years, but um, Group B doesn't.
we can calculate confidence intervals for the EMNPC formula, formula. and um, there's a Bailey formula for this that's in Webmetric Analyst, very complicated, but it's automatically produced by Webmetric Analyst when you uh, when it reports the EMNPC scores. So that's a really nasty formula for a confidence interval. I don't think I've seen a nastier one. And that's the other half of it. So the output of this would be uh, an estimate for the MNPC plus a lower and an upper confidence interval. And here's a graph showing a comparison of the world and four groups. And the world has a confidence interval centered around one. The world average is always one. And the four groups have scores centered around their average with a lower and upper 95% limit. And when the confidence intervals don't overlap, we have statistical evidence that the score, one score is higher than the other score. In fact, technically you're allowed a small confidence interval overlap and the difference can still be statistically significant. But uh, it's a quick visual check. If the confidence intervals don't overlap, then the difference is statistically significant. So here, for example, groups D and C has statistically significantly higher proportion cited than the world average. Group A has statistically significantly lower proportion cited and group B has a lower proportion cited than the world average, but the difference isn't statistically significant. So in summary, we've seen the EMNPC calculation, which is the normalized proportion cited, which can be used to compare web indicators for groups when the proportion cited is too low for averages, when the scores are mostly zero, altmetrics when the scores are mostly zero. And these include syllabus mentions, PowerPoint citations, Wikipedia citations, pattern citations, and grey literature citations. In fact, most of them except for uh, Mendeley readers and Twitter tweets. We saw that field and year equalization was needed to avoid biases with this formula. And we have a field year normalization component by, divided by, by dividing by the world average and then we, we uh, values above one for the EMNPC indicate above world average proportion cited, but we do have to get rid of small samples for this to be an accurate formula. So I hope that made sense and please let me know if you have any questions.